What's going on, everybody? It's your man, Ply Rock, along with my main man, Preacher Aaron. And this is the debut episode of Reboot Engage. What's going on, Preacher? How are you, man? I'm doing great. Haven't been asleep all night, so I'm feeling ready to go. I'm so glad you came to this prepared for our inaugural episode. Really means a lot. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I woke up at about 11 p.m. It's about right. You actually have not slept. It's 10 o'clock in the morning for all of you watching, by the way, the next day and listening on Spotify, iTunes, or Google Play, which is where you can find our podcast. You you bet you pulled an all-nighter for our debut episode. I did. That's because I was on such a weird sleep schedule that I would have been going to sleep about an hour ago. So oh we my. moved it around to where at least I'm up and mentally somewhat functional. Are, do you do you have do you live in a casino? Like, do you have windows? <laughs> like, I have, I have windows that are blacked out with, uh, not blacked. I got some pretty thick. Uh, I'm gonna send you. Over. I'm gonna send you a bottle of vitamin D just <laughs> so you can sleep at night. Oh my gosh! Wow. Wait till you hit forty, man. You you, you do have no problem yeah. sleeping. You'll have you'll have a problem sleeping for a long time though. My problem is usually, I was gonna say, my problem is usually not that I, I can't sleep, it's that I fall asleep. Yeah. The- yeah. No, I get it. Well, it's glad and great to have you here, man. We've been streaming together. We've been kind of with each other for a couple of years now on Facebook gaming and on Twitch. And uh, we just decided, you know what? We got a lot of things to say, a lot of cool stuff to go over that we don't really get a chance to go over and talk with uh, our community and you guys about uh, when we're doing the stream. So there's a lot of cool shit happening, not just in the world of gaming, but technology. Uh, uh, we kind of we, we'll stay away from the more... Uh, politics and shit like that but we uh you know there's a lot going on movies tv a lot of cool stuff going on man so first up dude i guess we'll get right into it is we just had a giant release come out last week uh i got to play through it you got to watch it i didn't really give a review on it yet that's resident evil village which was the biggest release we've had in video games in what the past like four or five months it's kind of been dry so it had the biggest booty in video games in the past four or five months you know what I'm yeah. yeah oh my gosh yes <laughs> yeah. uh, so everybody was clearly oh. obsessed with lady d we'll get into her too i still don't know how to say her last name i think i call her you know dimi titty rescue or something yeah. I, <laughs> but yeah. so, i mean that's the most accurate name she has it's yeah beautiful. it's funny i'm not sure if capcom did this on purpose or this was by accident but i don't know if they really realized she would catch fire like that on the internet and people would go crazy and cosplay and fall head over heels for this character design and everything else because she's really not and this is you know it's been out for a week now so we're gonna have light spoilers here but you know um she's really not in the game for like she's not the main antagonist by far she's not She's like a quarter, maybe a quarter of the game. So the way the game is structured essentially is it's kind of a semi-open world. So there's like a central hub. There's four or five different bigger areas that connect off this central hub. So it's a little different than other Resident Evil games. It's definitely different than Resident Evil 7. You know what I mean? Where it was kind of a linear story through some creepy ass shit. Um, This one is more, a little more open world, and she's one of those theme park feeling sections off the main hub. So she's not, once you beat her, and and she is the first lord, there's four lords, by the way. Once you beat her, she's done, and then she's the first one. So she's really not at the forefront of everything. So I don't, I don't think Capcom did that on purpose. I think if they had known I, she would it, be it's like a, that. It's a 50-50 there. Cause here's, they, they made the beta or the demo uh, involved her cast. And so I think that's part of why they used her as the main. Mm-hmm. And, and she is a very interesting character. She is the first one you get. So you can kind of, the idea I'm guessing thinking from a marketing is they get you hooked. Cause you're like, oh, this is her. This is, we're in the, you know, and they get mm-hmm. you to where you're already in, by the time you're done with it, you're invested. Like it's yeah. kind of like making sure you get to that point where you're you're invested in the story, and then you're like, wait a minute, I just killed her, and but but there's more. What? Where do we go now? You know. Um, so yeah, I do think that's. I don't know if it was completely unintentional, but I I agree that they did sell the entirety of the game. But of course, that may be intentional as well because they didn't want to spoil you know how the rest of the game went. They were just kind of you know. Yeah, absolutely. I I get it that they didn't want to spoil it. I just. She was so popular on the internet. I just feel like they were like, oh, it's kind of like, remember when the Mandalorian first came out and all of a sudden baby Yoda caught fire all over the internet and 
Disney was kind of caught flat-footed with, oh, shit, we better make dolls, we better make... Like, they they really weren't looking at Baby Yoda. Like, yeah, this is cute. This is another Groot, you know, Gru or whatever, that little tree dude from Marvel, whatever that thing is. They were kind of like, they didn't realize that Baby Yoda would become, like, the meme of the century and everything else that happened. Right. So it took them a few months to, you know, six months or whatever to design some products to get out there. At that point, you know, the fire, you know how things work in pop culture. Uh, it kind of, you know, it spikes and then, you know. So I think Capcom... You know, if they had known Lady D was going to be so... I mean, they could have had Halloween costumes ready. They could have had all sorts of shit. They maybe could have expanded her role in the game. Had they had their marketing department had a feeling that this character... Because the other three lords are not... They're interesting, but they're not as anywhere near as popular or interesting as her for the gaming mm -hmm. or internet community. So, anyway, so the game is set up like a... You know, an open world in the in the middle. It starts off pretty hot and heavy. It's the continuing story of Ethan, who I know a lot of the internet shits all over. But I'm going to go on the record right now, Preach. And don't mm -hmm. at me, bro. I think Ethan yeah. is a fantastic video game hero. So I know that a lot of people are like, he's boring. There's not really anything going on there. I don't think you need to know that much about Ethan. I think, number one, he's a great husband he's a great father all right and he's sacrificial all over the place to save his family between both mm -hmm. stories more importantly this story because in the first one i do see the argument where he's boring and he's kind of just like this little he doesn't really do much and he's kind of just the person to take you through the uh the, the game you know what i mean mm -hmm. but in this one they tried really hard to flesh him out a little bit more and give him a little bit more of a personality and especially towards the end it's he's and it's resident evil is not known for its tearjerker moments it's not known for its you know it's not known for its oscar worthy writing but they right. really they really tried to humanize ethan in a very honorable way and they did a pretty good job of the whole story of ethan as a whole so i don't know if he's necessarily the greatest resident evil protagonist of all time but he's he i don't think he deserves the shit that flies at him because he's boring or whatever else. He's he's just an honorable guy, man. So call me a Superman fan. I don't know why people would think I love Superman. Call me a Boy Scout. Call me whatever the fuck you want. He's a pretty good dude. You know what I mean? So that's my take on him. What do you think of Ethan, by the way? Look at that. I know I'm small square. My eye roll. But, okay, so yeah, I've heard a couple of arguments. One, they were saying, well, he's not really sacrificial because he's already dead but i don't know that that's a solid argument because he doesn't he know i mean his, he doesn't know and i don't know that you're really dead if you still have your cognitive abilities mm -hmm. you still i mean he was technically he was dead when they invaded and shot the or shot mia mia yeah well i think there. her name's mia the uh, wife yeah 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 in the, the beginning wife, yeah mm -hmm. Um, you know, he had the baby. He had the baby after he was dead somehow. So he couldn't have been that dead. He wasn't dead dead. He he was alive enough that he he was living life as a as a person. He was enjoying his family. So he was giving up his ability to enjoy his family and enjoy his life. That was still there even after he had technically died in Resident Evil 7. Um, so he didn't so know. I, I don't think, yeah, he is. So I don't think that's a valid argument of that he wasn't sacrificial just because like, yeah, he uh, in his mind, he was still able to live his life, uh, and it maybe not even in his mind. In reality, he was living his life. Nor, I mean, it may have eventually given out. We don't know, but um, so I, I kind of I'm with you on that one. That I, I did. Uh, I thought they wrote him fine. I mean, it's. It, the it, idea of that character is it's supposed to be give with the Resident Evil you're supposed to feel a sense of you're in the game and so I think that's what he does best is he's not so powerful a character that he overwhelms the user's sense of being feeling that threat of being in that world like yeah. you kind of feel like oh I'm being chased by Lady Dumisque or Dem yeah yeah Dem Dem well, or whatever he's also the first character in Resident Evil who's first person so. Mm -hmm. Even more so than, you you know, when you're playing as Leon and you're playing as Claire and you're playing as Chris and all these other Resident Evils, you weren't, you were, st you were one step back as a, in third yeah. person view watching, you were controlling the character, but you were watching the character the whole time, the mannerisms, you know, the reactions to the zombies, mm -hmm. you know, everything else. Whereas this was the first time Capcom was attempting to... Those are your eyes. Ethan's eyes are your eyes. So instead... You know what I'm saying? So it's less oh, yeah. like a movie and more like an experience, right? So of course they had to probably pull back on the... 
character development of a character because you're supposed to be that character. So you'd like to think as a parent, as a spouse, as a human being, you would hopefully, and probably we all like to think we would, most of us in the planet probably wouldn't, would, would go into a, a uh, village full of werewolves and vampires and all sorts <laughs> of goofy shit and try to save our family. So mm -hmm. I think it was an admirable job on Capcom's part. I think they did the best they could do with that aspect of it. The 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 pros I had with the game, I had a lot of fun with it, by the way. I did, I did enjoy the game. So the pros I had with it, the game's gorgeous, number one. That Resident Evil engine is amazing. And by the way, that Resident Evil engine can run on computers without graphics cards. Like, you can run it on integrated graphic chips. They, they were doing tests on it at, like, 720p, 30 frames. You can actually play on that engine, which is nuts. But the yeah. game the game's beautiful, number one. Um, I did like the fact that they expanded it out a little bit. It wasn't so linear. Um, but there's drawbacks to that, too. If it's not going to be that linear, it's not that scary. So the terror level of Resident Evil uh, did come down quite substantially to me than the last game which I know they kind of did that on purpose, too, because they thought the last one was too scary. Um, yeah, people weren't finishing the game. They were starting it, getting too scared, and not wanting to play it. Yeah. And so people were not finishing their game, and that's why they did They're like, we want people... To, you, you need to have moments where you feel afraid, but we want you to actually play through the game. Yeah, I guess everybody's not as brave like me. So, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> all I do is play this crazy shit. So, <laughs> um, but it was a little more action-focused. It wasn't quite the the... the drivel of Resident Evil 6 where it was just like a Michael Bay movie so they they added a little bit more action to it so it was fun it was cool the shooting mechanics were pretty tight it wasn't Call of Duty tight but it was pretty good um the story does get I want to say the story does get kind of weaker as it goes I think it starts off extremely strong and I don't think because they start the game with Lady D and because you're so hyped for all this stuff once you get past her I do think it's kind of a law of diminishing returns um the other lords are different. There is variety. When you get to the puppet master lady, I'm sorry, I don't know her name. When you get to her level, it's very classic Resident Evil-y. It's very Resident Evil 7. It's very like you're helpless. You don't have weapons. It's a haunted house. That one, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> I didn't really like the mutated dude with the fish very much. He was like a fishy dude. Uh, he was lame, I thought. And then the... Yeah, uh, he, he was weird. He didn't really, like the other... I love it, but I to be with me. Yeah, yeah, the, the, shut the, up. The other characters had a little bit more of a relatable <laughs> vibe that you've kind of felt where they were coming from. Whereas that guy just felt like a weird blobby monster that they threw in for the sake of having a fourth blobby monster or something. I don't know. Yeah, it, just, it just didn't, didn't feel the same. I wasn't. I mean, even the level, it was just like a. It was a. It was a kind of a weird linear uh, underground mine, and then right. there was a lake, and then you were done. It wasn't like. The beautiful castle of Lady D. It wasn't mm -hmm. like this haunted mansion of the ventriloquist lady. Even Heisenberg, um, who's the who's one of the other lords, he's like he's almost like Magneto, where he can control metal. Um, his factory was pretty cool. It was a little too, I think, uh, science fictiony. It was weird. It was like yeah, I felt like I was playing Quake. Do you remember Quake? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it kind of felt like those characters, like those alien cyborg dudes, like the Borg. Like it wasn't quite like creaturey. It was more like cyberpunky. <laughs> But it was cool. It was cool. Um, but those three other people weren't as interesting as Lady D. And the other thing, Lady D wasn't as menacing to me as I thought she was going to be. They did design her like Mr. X, uh, where she was mm -hmm. constantly pursuing you in the castle. But she was kind of slow. And, you know, she... I mean, I know Mr. X was slow. I get it. But she was kind of slow. And you could kind of work your way around her after a while. Her daughters were actually more of a pain in the ass than her. They were like these three uh, vampire ladies, kind of like from Dracula. You remember the three ladies who get Jonathan Harlow? Uh, they end up, you know, taking him and trying to turn him into a vampire. They're kind of based on them. And they would turn into like these bugs. And then they would chase you around and you, you couldn't really kill them in a normal fashion. You had to get them in sunlight. They were more of a pain in the butt than Lady D was. Because once you saw her coming, she was slow to open a door. She, she'd have to go down and up because she was so tall. So uh, 
but the overall design was beautiful. Um, the cons, I guess we could talk about the cons I had with the game. Um, there's not a lot of cons. I thought the, the length was great. I thought it was perfect. It was about 10 hours long. Um, like I said, I already gave you the law of diminishing returns, I thought, on the story. Like, they couldn't up the ante. They, I think they started too hot. I did, um, I did like the ending. Uh, light spoiler here that Chris, Chris Redfield is more involved than you'd think. I thought the ending was very cool. It was kind of weird how they went, like, full Call of Duty at the end, <laughs> which I was just fine. But they, um, it kind they kind of left the survival horror and said... Let's bring some pain, dude. I thought that was pretty cool. Made your character feel powerful towards the end, but there's a lot of like different ideas in this game that I don't know if everything was like, they focused maybe on a little too much and they didn't fine tune down on one idea because they had a lot going on. They had like a mech battle in there where you're like a giant, you know, you have a giant machine gun, you're fighting like, you know, those like transformers. Like they had a lot of things going on in the game. So I do highly recommend it. Um, I, I will say I don't know where it ranks on the list of Resident Evil games, so I it, it, I don't think it's the best Resident Evil game ever. I still that I still think that's Resident Evil 2. Um, I think Resident Evil 2 Remake is pretty damn close to the best Resident Evil game I've ever played. Uh, with Resident Evil 2 itself just hanging on by a thread because I was a little kid when I played that, but. Um, it's definitely not a stinker. It's definitely not like a Resident, Umbr yeah. Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles. Like, it's not... It's by no means garbage. You know what I mean? So... I'm thinking ahead. that... I was just thinking that they probably could have spice to earn... I think, it, like you are saying, diminishing returns. If they... Because the beginning of the game not that this isn't too much of a spoil yeah it almost kind of sets lady demiscu or demistry or whatever that he still gets there um versus it was almost like vampires versus werewolves right yeah underworld um, yeah so it's kind of they could have i think flushed those two characters out as being rival gangs and maybe had those two groups fighting and you had you more involved in almost like a conflict between them mm -hmm. um and then West. that way keeping those characters alive like in the in not alive but just in the story a little longer instead mm -hmm. of basically take the two that were in the middle out just and then fill that space with the, t the two kind of conflicting characters because i thought both of those characters were interesting they kind of showed two different sides of how the virus was affecting people or whatever like you had the kind of like the refined vampires and then the more rough and tumble rawr, were werewolves right and you could have kind of more focused on those and maybe flushed out an in-between um status between them and then maybe that could have um given the, the story a little more impact on the um because you're right it kind of took away from this the story really started strong and you really gave you this like you're kind of invested in how this is going to work between these oh two yeah the baby the and, wife what's chris yeah. doing the the it van was, was yeah and then it just kind of started to feel like because you don't really care about at least two of the four you know i mean i mean I, they make it sob stories for them but in reality it, they kind of started with those two main bad guys or three but those two that were kind of conflicting out of the four lords mm -hmm. and you know you you kind of get invested in those two yeah like, oh this is gonna be between. and then the, the, so the other two just kind of almost felt like who are these people by the time you figure them out they're already gone you don't really care like they could have really focused on those two main characters yeah you could have the one that they built up lady Demishku, who they you know everybody's all hyped about and then her antagonist or her opposite and that gives him kind of added value heisenberg right off the bat yeah, heisenberg mm -hmm. so her, those two could have really been i think if they would have spent more time focusing on them instead of trying to add two completely different um uh uh monsters they may have been able to who uh or villains not monsters. yeah they could have used the other two as like mini bosses or as yeah, just like yeah. side characters or creations mm -hmm. of the other two lords you know somehow writing them in as you know they don't have to be these main characters because the the you're right two out of the four were like i don't even remember their backstories um i do remember the ventriloquist lady was cool as hell so i don't want to completely write off the third lord because i really did like that little demonic doll and the mm -hmm. house that they were in like i thought that was one of the best sustained half hour 45 minutes of the whole game was that was that haunted mansion and i wanted more of that like i wanted more of that environment okay. um lady d's 
castle was more like the original Resident Evil, like walking into that first place and like, where do I go? This door is locked, find a key, do kind of yeah. that stuff. Whereas that ventriloquist level was more like Resident Evil 7, where like, this is fucking terrifying. What's going on here? Noise over here, noise over there. What do I do? You know what I mean? So not really, not really so much focused on the items, but focused on you're helpless and this thing's coming for you, dude. Like... One main puzzle, got to figure it out, something's coming. Like, I really enjoyed that particular soiree into that area of the game. Um, and then, like, I, the other one, like I said, the, the actually, I think, honestly, maybe they could have kept that one and expanded the ventriloquist a little more and just get rid of the blob monster guy. Like, he was pathetic. Like, oh, me yeah. doesn't like me. I'm like, get this dude out of here, bro. Like, this is, this, that one was, to me, was a waste of time. Like, that one was... We need something disgusting. Like, let's. what's the most disgusting snot rag we could design <laughs> to put in this right. thing? Because he was just a blob of mucus with eyeballs or whatever the hell. I was hell. thinking, yeah, I don't think I've seen anybody write anything positive about that particular. Because I have, I read some articles where they really did, like you, they liked the uh, ventriloquist lady. They even mentioned their names. I can't remember now. Yeah. But they, yeah, they, t they talked about that being really an enjoyable part of the game. But... I have seen very few people say that they thought the blob monster was, um, I don't know, positive for the game as opposed to more just like, you know, a distraction. Yeah, it almost felt like padding. I mean, I don't mm. want to say it was padding because I think there was more effort there than padding. I mean, you can... You can clearly tell in a video game when there's padding going on, yeah. like, you know, backtracking and like, you know, pick up seven of these and six of those. Like it wasn't quite padding, but it was definitely like, shit, we need to do one more thing here. Like this mm. game's this game's seven hours long. We need to make it nine or ten hours long. Let's do an abandoned mine with like a creepy snotty thing. Like it was almost like a like it was like. He was on the bottom of the list of, like, ideas that they had crossed off, and they were like, well, shit, we got to add something here. So, um, I mean, even with Capcom, they're such a great video game company, they can even turn a pile of dog poo into something halfway decent, right? It's like it's like a Clint Eastwood movie. I mean, even if he directs a bad movie, it's still a decent movie, or Steven Spielberg. Like, mm. you're still getting a decent thing. So, it wasn't trash. It just didn't fit the overall quality to me of the other two lords, especially Lady D, and it didn't fit... Uh, it didn't really fit that he was useless in the story. So that was probably the biggest drawback of the whole thing. Um, I do like the fact I did like the ending. No spoiler. I did like the fact that they set up the next Resident Evil. Very nice. Mm hmm. I think it, I'm excited for it. Um, this is like the, one of the quickest selling Resident Evil games of all time in the Western world. Um, it's doing very well. However, it is not doing good in Japan, which I thought was interesting. Um, I've been looking. Yeah, it's selling about half as good as the other uh, Resident Evil games normally sell in Japan. Usually they sell between 200, like around 250,000 copies. And I read this morning, uh, Resident Evil Village in its first week was under 200,000. It was like at 150 or 160,000. So it's selling, which is crazy to me. Uh, but here in the United States and some other Western countries, it's uh, it's breaking records. So, the, by, the way, by the way, interesting tidbit before we move on to other things. Do you know the, what the best-selling Resident Evil game of all time actually is? Like no, the most, no the most copies, the most money. Nope. It's Resident you, you, you. Resident Evil Five is the one that was the biggest blockbuster with Chris and uh, he goes to South Africa. Oh, yeah. well, that's because yeah, isn't that the one that like they've remade thirty-four? Oh no, no, South no, South that's North four. North four they remade. Four, four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, Force had HD edition, HD edition, new edition. They still won't fix yeah. the camera in four. But uh, no, huh. five, well, five was because it came after four, and everybody thought four. This is actually how this tells you a lot. It how still sells. Well. It's 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 the game that comes after the masterpiece. Like yeah. that's why Cyberpunk blew up right before anybody really knew. Yeah, this is going to be a completely different foray for. Yeah, well, their marketing um, was a genius too. Uh, CD Projekt Red. Yeah, but I mean, and and people were waiting for a cyberpunk game like they've been wanting one yeah but it uh, it it sold a lot of copies because of how good the witcher 3 was because yeah. the witcher 3 was a just brilliant masterpiece game people already assumed the next game. and so the same thing happened with four four was considered a like it got 10 out of 10s in most magazines and other, you know at, at worst a 9 out of 10 you know it was one of those games that was really really highly rated mm -hmm. and so five being like oh this is the next one people were expecting kind of more four and so they went, and, and I, I do think that's how kind of like video games work now. 
more often than not because we're, we're not patient and we don't wait for people to play it and for multiple reviews like a week or two out from the release date to decide whether or not we want to you know play it we kind of just go asap and make sure we get it release day because you feel like you're you know fomo fear of missing out you're 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 worried that you're not getting the experience while other and you can't talk to other like other people are talking about the game and you know discussing what's going on and you you don't get to you know it's just it has that atmosphere so a lot of times the preceding game has a big effect on the uh well, the reason the, one. the reason I don't really wait on some of these games is um, number one, I don't really trust video game journalists anymore. A I'd lot of them, so True. I'm gonna True. go out there and say it. Like a lot of their articles are garbage, and you know, I feel like sometimes there's an ulterior motive in the game review as opposed to uh-huh. whether it's their agenda, whether a video game company has maybe, uh, you know, taken them out to dinner a little bit. I mean, it's human nature. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I think I think games, you know, especially on Steam, especially because we do me and you do a lot more PC stuff than we do console yeah. stuff. Um, if the game sucks and I'm playing it within 10 minutes, I just refund it. So, yeah, well, I mean, the, I yeah, don't yeah. I don't really need someone else's opinion. Plus, my audience, our audiences, will tell us if the game is enjoyable or not anyway. So we do have feedback right away from our communities. You know, there are some games that are not highly rated that uh, that maybe necessarily I don't, like, I don't think they're, like, masterpieces, but they make such good content that I'll play them more than I would normally play them because people are getting enjoyment out of it, and it's fun. You know what I mean? If But, you know, uh-huh. like, you know where I'm going with this, too. I can see your face, you son of a bitch. Like, well, like, there's, uh, also, there's also other reasons you play games that may not be masterpieces. <laughs> so, so yeah, so there are, you know, but Resident Evil Village is is is. I would say it's worth the 60 bucks Uh you know obviously it'll probably you know for people who don't want to rip 60 bucks in a couple of months it will be cheaper it's it's where however you buy it whether you buy it at 60 or you buy it lower it's totally worth it if you love Resident Evil it's a great experience overall it's a solid eight out of ten out of the ply burgers. It's 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 worth it. It was it was it's great. It's it so far it is the highest quality game to me that has come out since January first, twenty twenty one. It is the it's the best AAA title I have played since January first. And I play did, a, um, I, Immortals. Immortals was last year. Was that last year? Okay, I couldn't. Re- I know it was either real late because it came out after Assassin's Creed. And Assassin's yeah, it Creed got buried. Was- it got buried because it came out in a very yeah. bad window time. And Immortals, Immortals doesn't get the respect it deserves. It's a good game. I was playing it today in between nurse sessions. Like yeah. I, was, I rarely, and um, you know this, I rarely play. Like hardly ever have. Yeah. For video games, it's not on stream. But last night, I was. You know, I wanted to play it, and it's it's a blast. Yeah, they did but such a sorry, yeah no no you're never interrupting they i'm just saying they immortals is just one of those games that just kind of like remember titanfall 2 yeah titanfall 2 was so much better than titanfall such a good Agreed. game they I did such Lighting. a great oh. yeah and they dropped it right in between call of duty and i think battlefield they did it something the yeah it was battlefield i believe and three people bought Four? it like it was oh yeah that game should have been yep. so much and by the way it still sells pretty good now for you know seven bucks or whatever it always yeah, is okay. but well it, that and there's a uh, competitive mark now because there's the speed run there's a like a yeah. test you can do like mm-hmm. a run test that like it's sure. wall jumping and that kind of stuff and Great so game. now people are doing speed yeah people are doing speed tests on that and so that's why it's had a kind of a renewal because other than just playing the multiplayer there's now like people trying to beat a certain time and those are you know those are huge on twitch those are huge in you know it's just like guitar hero that's still that game's a billion years old and people are still you know streaming it and playing it ad nauseum because there's something to that aspect. yeah absolutely um now what speaking of games that could derail other games now that we're done with yeah, resident yeah, evil yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. one of your main yeah. focuses on your channel has always been uh call of duty Warzone, mm-hmm. and i know yeah. through private conversations and breaking down the fourth wall that you have been extremely curious and excited for something else so why don't we lead into that and you tell me what's going on in the world of Call of Duty versus Battlefield? I tell you, baby boo. Yeah. Um. So okay, I'll just. Break. I'm looking forward to Battlefield. Mm-hmm. Um. The the they have like a something a release trailer, a release announcement. Uh. All that stuff's supposed to be happening. We're, we're pretty sure 
it's going to be at E3 this year. It's supposed to take place in like June. Well, they've already announced they're having a major Battlefield 6 announcement. It's like the big Battlefield 6 announcement announcement will be June 2021. Mm-hmm. So in, you know, less than a month probably. But whenever E3 is, which I think it's around that time, that's why everybody thought it was going to be an E3 event. They're going to make their big announcement for it. Sure. Um, it It's from what people have said about it, it's kind of a return to form because Battlefield had actually kind of got off the rails a little bit with their two more historical, the World War One, World War Two games. They'd lost some, because they were building some steam where they were kind of starting to chip away at Call of Duty's, you know, um, stances like the big boy shooter. You know, the, the king of shooters. And then I think both Battlefield, um, I think it's, I think they called it one because they were dumb and it was World War One. And then Battlefield Five, which was World War Two. And it, their numbering system got wacky too. But it just, it didn't have that same mechanic and feel that the, all the previous Battlefields had had. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one is supposed to kind of be returning to form. They actually took some time with it. That was the other thing. They started trying to make annual to biannual releases. And this one they've had years to work on. They've had like, I think it was five years, but they've been working on this one. So they've actually had time to put the time that they were putting in previous um, games. But anyway, I, I do think, getting to your point, I I think it will take a good bite out of Warzone. Right now, Warzone's the Battle Royale. Du jour. Um, it's been losing some steam because they've had hackers and they aren't particularly doing taking action to solve the problem at a the court. They keep kicking people. They keep banning hackers, mm-hmm. but they're not doing it. They're not doing it in a way that it, hackers are just going back out, getting a new account, and getting right back on. It's not. It's not actually alleviating the problem other than you know it takes them a, w- a couple of weeks to get back in the flow of things well, why right? aren't like, they <laughs> fixing the problem they maybe they just maybe they can maybe there's a fundamental nah, problem there, there's well yeah <laughs> it's i think what it is is it's too late now to add certain systems to the game maybe but i it's not really they just don't have any anti-cheat the people are like well you could use the same that csgo uses you can use the same as this this or this and this um i mean i don't they never really just put that. I, th- I honestly think it was a money thing. They just really? felt like it. Yeah, I think it's because it's pretty expensive to develop and I- implement it. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a weird thing because, like, here's the thing. It would be one thing if it was just kind of like the peons that, you know, any shooter you go into, you're going to find people who claim that there's cheaters, even though it's just other people. Are good. Well, yeah, that's just natural. This one, this one actually has just like s- swaths of documented cases showing people just hacking beyond even after they go oh we just banned 30,000 hackers within a week there's people just you know doing stuff that's clearly hacking you know just well let me ask you this stuff. let me ask you this is this more this is clearly a pc problem this is not um, really a, it's not as n- nowhere. Well, I know there's crossplay, but let's just say it's not as much on the PlayStation and Xbox. I mean, the, the hackers aren't generally on the, the consoles. The, the the horrible hacking is not on those. There are some hacks now for consoles. Um, there's controllers that a either upload oh, yeah. the hacks from the controller, but yeah. there's also controllers that like completely neutralize recoil for any gun. So you can have a gun that the factor that keeps it from being overpowered is that it has a high recoil. Yeah. If you take that out, all of a sudden it's it's impossible. There's uh, ones that have like increased aim assist in the controller. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's a few things like that that like those are cheats. They're just not as egregious as say blatant wall hacking where you can see people all across the map even though you're not supposed to or the 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 the, the auto lock on where it's just you literally pull up your gun and it sucks right onto somebody and shoots it's not that bad but it's it's you know there's some pretty significant ones still on console but yes the worst problems are coming from the pc it's always going to be the case because pc is an open platform and people are able to um yeah you can program it's amazing you can get go ahead I have never in the history of video games seen a game come you 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 included have this weird hybrid love hate relationship with this fucking game. When I look at Twitter, when I look at, at all the other streamers, communities, gamers, whatever, I have never seen a game bitched about more that still is played all and streamed all the time. Like I have never seen it. Like I'm not a huge Call of Duty first person shooter guy. I used to love the campaigns. I get home on Call of Duty day. I used to call it. Take my three or four hours put on my headphones, run through that Michael Bay three-hour story, jump into some multiplayer when I was younger. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4 was like the greatest thing of all time. Oh, yeah. You know, for PlayStation 3, it was like my life when I was a teenager. It was great. But, at, at, you know, I never, within a couple of weeks to a month, I maybe prestiged once and I was always on to something else, you know? So I've yeah, never been that real funny, hardcore, yeah. and I know you're a hardcore can, FPSer, but I've never seen such a community of people just yeah. shit 
all over one particular thing <laughs> all day and then go, yo, I'm going to start my stream. We're going to play some Warzone. Like, I've never seen it. <laughs> I think it, it's a weird... Well, okay, and this is interesting. The guy who designed Warzone for Call of Duty, because there, there are... It's actually a different game from the regular Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. um, he said... And he's on saying that hackers have ruined his masterpiece. And he's not completely wrong, because the concept of the game... Oh, it's fantastic. Is it's fantastic. It's, they fixed a lot of issues that Battle Royale games have. Um, like, their respawn system, the way it works, the way you can buy people back in, the way you get a free shot you go into the one-on-one -on -one, the gulag you can kind of earn your way you get one free respawn so you don't you, you don't die early in the match and then you're just done yeah, they did a lot of things where you can buy a loadout so you're not just stuck with mm -hmm. completely random number generator so it actually makes it a little more skill based mm -hmm. like you can choose and make up the and strategy base so you can make a, a loadout that fits you best that you know that you're comfortable with and then it's your best versus somebody else's best mm -hmm. as opposed to a lot of other battle royales where it's just like I hope I land in the area that has the best gun and somebody else does. Like you Fortnite. Know? Yeah. 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 Or, or PUBG's like that too. It's like, I hope I land in the right spot. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. Fundamentally, the game's fun yeah, and, and it's it, very it well great. designed. Yes. Uh, but it, it, my point was just, no, that, they're that, not the, fixing what I was it. To, yeah. The, what I was getting to is that's why people still love it because we love what it could be. And when it works and when it does run, it's great. You get this super euphoric energy. It's just fun. It's some of the most fun you can have play mm -hmm. the game but the problem is the bad so bad that it increases the rage level too right like it's it's the uh the it's so polar opposite that that's that's i was you know you're saying people rage really hard or or they play it non-stop and that's kind of why it's it's addictive because it's so good but it's also can be ruined so much that it makes the 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 down so much stronger you know there's the high and then there's the low and the low is much lower because the high is so high um and i think that's that's part of what you're getting at with that do that you analysis. think do you think that it would be smart for call it for a activision or uh you know infinity whoever made who made the it was infinity right infinity Raven ward Fox. yeah okay do you think Actually, it would be would well, do you think it would be smart for them to put the next to put Warzone behind a real paywall? Would that get rid of a lot of the hacking issues? Like, no, I, don't uh, think, I don't think it's a money thing because, well, okay, yeah, because if they had to pay, you're right, if they had to pay to get, um, like, if you want to play Warzone, 60 bucks a year. Yeah. And then they, then they can fund. I mean, I know they're making a ton of money off it. I don't think funding's the issue for activism to fix these things. But what if they, like, all right, remember the, remember when uh, the first Battle Royale attempt was the um, Black Ops 4? Did, yes. did that have the same level of hacking and problems that, because that's always been behind a paywall. I didn't play that one as much. I'm going to be honest, look, at that time, I was playing with a different group of people. And so mm -hmm. I didn't, they didn't want to play it that much. So I... I played as much as I could, but that you know, it wasn't a game where you wanted to jump in by yourself and play. Yeah, and that that Call of Duty in particular wasn't as popular as some other ones too. Yeah. Um. So I think that, but a lot of people liked it. I just I do think it eventually succumbed to. Um. I mean, all of them. If you wait long enough, they get taken over by hack to some degree. Um, I do think for some reason Battlefield Battlefield's had hackers, but it's never felt as overwhelming as it's not um, as egregious. Yeah, as egregious as this one has been. And I yeah. do think that maybe what you're saying is part of it is you can just get a hack and then well, it's kind of like oh you get kicked, you just start a new profile and then boom, you're right back in. That's know? what I mean. So I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like you know, like um, it's kind of like a dating site, right? So like, say you're going on a dating site, you go on one of those free ones. Boy, you get a lot of fucking profiles. You're like, what the fuck is this? But if yeah. you go on like one that costs a little bit of money all of a sudden a little bit higher quality you go on one that's expensive you know you, you start getting rid of yeah. all that riffraff you know what i mean so i don't know if maybe activision can put i mean i maybe they're afraid to because the free to play model just so sucks up so many people to play yeah. the game um the well, other thing with warzone because no uh, let me because they they could do ip ban or hardware ban those are both things that can happen yeah they just haven't implemented them so in other words it's your they can go get the data from your computer about the hardware that you're running and ban any computer that uses that hardware and then you're just stuck so they could do that but they're not or the ip address it's not as hard because people can play on uh, a lot of people are playing on um pns and so they can kind of spoof their ip their ip but it, it, it does that does more than just nothing and they don't do either right now they just kind of ban an account and accounts can, are literally free 
you can make one again in another two days. You know, it's it's so I do think Activision could do more without having to charge for it. They could still limit. There's other steps before they had to go if they felt like it's a monetary, a huge monetary loss to not go free to play. Like they would lose more players than it's worth. They could. Oh, do it's a other numbers steps. game. It's a numbers game. They don't. Yeah. If 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 you can't if you can't make enough noise and dent the company's financial returns uh, for the problems that the, I mean, it's like an insurance company, right? So if if they're paying out a certain amount of claims but they're raking in a certain amount of money that's way higher than the claims they're paying out. They're not going to change their business model no matter if, you know, people are blowing up on yeah. Twitter or whatever. I mean, they'll, they'll massage you a little bit to try to shut you up, but they're not going to they're yeah. not gonna fundamentally change what they're doing. So until people stop playing Warzone, until yep. people stop buying the $15, $20, whatever it is, pass for Season 3, Season 4, they are not going to clean up the game to the, to the problems that you're saying because yeah. overall... I, I mean, I, overall, I'm sure the overall, way overall majority of people are not hackers. Mm -hmm. The overall majority of people are uh, playing the game, buying the season pass, everything else that they've been doing. And well, it's inter oh, go ahead. Sorry. I got another point. Once you get there. No, no, no. It's okay. So I just don't, if people are not willing to come together to force their hand, like really, mm -hmm. like, like they're not going to... I'm not their target demo, I guess, really, anymore. I'm their target demo for the $60 story. I'll play the story, and I know I'm weird, but I'll play the story. I'll play a little multiplayer. I'll check out the thing, and I'll play with you once in a while. Like, I'm not the dedicated... Uh, my my, my, my playtime on Call of Duty over the years has dwindled from, you know, in a calendar year, 23 days worth of playtime right. down to, like, you know, two days total in a year or whatever so i'm not to me it's not uh it's not as huge of a deal but if another video game company was doing that to me in a different like say i'm excited for the outlast trials is coming out big game coming out for the play rock uh -huh. nation if there's hackers and all sorts of crap and all, i mean even if the game's fantastic and then but there's all these issues that's when i would feel like you feel where i would be like fuck this and i'd be like screaming at them and i'd be so frustrated because it's good right there it could be so great so i totally i i am I feel with what you're saying, man. Yeah. yeah no, well, what I was going to say is I think part of the problem also is there's not a game that has come out since Stone dropped and took most of the big shooter streamers. No. Like in the Tap Man, Stone Mountain, uh, Nick Mar you know, a lot of the first person shooter streamers are doing what. So as long as they're doing it, the people who watch them are going to want to do it. And there's still going to be a pop. So that's why I think Battlefield 6 has a chance to take it on. Because Battlefield 6 was almost like one of the original um, Battle Royales. Like they had huge maps and you drop, oh you could drop in at different places. And it wasn't like this small, tiny map that, you know, you could use a sniper and you could use strategy and take over this place and use a vehicle to drive over and flank an enemy and get behind them and capture a spot and that kind of stuff. Like a lot of that strategy. And they, I think, and this is this has been theorized, whether or not Battlefield 6 is going to have a Battle Royale mode. They may be having a battle royale that's based off of their engine and their shooting or their 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 game um, which would also be interesting but i do think like i hear these i watch a lot of these streamers and they are saying we're ready for something new we're tired of this game <laughs> this as it is we're kind of ready to try something else this game's gotten stuck even with the updates we're trying to you know ring we're trying to survive until that next thing comes out and i do think battlefield 6 has the hype behind it and it looks you know what they've shown in trailers looks good it looks like it's a return to the old feel where you're blowing up entire buildings not out of a uh a planned sequence but like you can actually throw c4 on walls and if you blow up enough walls the building will collapse type of a deal because i remember that was a thing on bad company too that was a blast you could run up and if somebody was like, let's say there's somebody camping in the house, you didn't have to try to go run into these corners where they were watching to get them out. You could throw C4 on like the, the walls that were like crutch walls, the four, like the main walls. Mm -hmm. And if you blew those up, it would, the whole thing would, and they would die inside of it. And the building was, it wouldn't go back up. It was done. And so um, it was really, it was just really interesting how that mechanical work. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that it, and I like the, the squad me mechanism where there's like different classes that helps the squad out. Um, I, and, and 
it was weird. Like Battlefield somehow also gets you fit inside of bigger teams, mm-hmm. and so you feel like you're working with a bunch of different people, but you're still working with your squad too. It has it's it's very well made when they do it right. But it's you know is it my hope is, is it dice? Yes, it's still dice. I think it's EA dice. Yeah, EA mm-hmm. still there. I remember yeah. Battlefield when it first came out. I'm gonna date myself right now, but I remember as a kid there used to be these computer cafes where you would go to a computer cafe and they had like 15 or 20 computers in the cafe and then they had like a console section maybe in the back and it was like six bucks an hour or five bucks an hour you could sit there and all the computers were land together and we played battlefield the original battlefield one battlefield two on these computers against each other and have tournaments and they'd have like sleepovers so what you would do is you'd set your parents would sign a waiver you'd go down and you'd pull an all-nighter they'd have pizzas delivered and you would play battlefield all night for six bucks an hour <laughs> oh, yeah. on these those places were so cool man i miss some of those awesome. places I yeah agree. it was it you met like you met people who had the same interests as you mm-hmm. and uh just because at that time the internet wasn't quite as good as it is now so when you played then you got much better connection with it because it was land yeah so you were hardwired and it was all right at that spot sure and so, like, it really felt clean, too. You didn't have that lag and a lot of the stuff that could get in the way of online at that time. Yeah. I don't, yeah, it was a black. And you could yell at people. I mean, in a friendly way, obviously. But you could be like, oh, I can't believe you. You know, you could actually, like, yeah, you could yell across friend. the room. Like, are you yeah. shitting me? You just sniped me, you jerk? Like, you could be exactly. like, yeah. So, yeah, we, we've, 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 uh, yeah, obviously, those all went out of business pretty fast within a we couple made, of we years. Made sure a bit, yeah. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, Battlefield 6 coming out, I'm guessing, November. Is that the release date? Uh, they, they haven't said yet. That's that's okay. what they're going to uh, announce in June. So I may, you know, when it when it happens, I will I will make sure and to keep it. Uh, I'll, I'll give my opinion. I will watch carefully and watch the whole event and give you my up to date professional. Opinion. But to this date, my favorite, maybe second favorite game, first favorite shooter, and this is by somebody who's played shooters as long as I can remember, mm-hmm. was Bad Company 2. Battlefield Bad Company 2. Absolutely the most fun I've had playing a shooter to this date. I've, I've longed to go back to it. Actually, some of the people who I plan on playing Battlefield 6 with are people who aren't playing this game now, but they played Bad Company 2 with me. So I'm going to go back for, like, people I haven't played with, like, five, six, ten years. Mm-hmm. They're all planning on getting back together with this one. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, man. I hope you're right, dude, because yep. Warzone, whew, it gets, it's a, mm, it's, it's, it's a <laughs> emotional oh, roller coaster. No. And I feel, I feel for this, I feel for the content creators who play the same game day in and day out. I'm not built that way, so I wouldn't be able to play the same game day in and day out. Um, that's why I'm very fortunate to play, get to play, you know, three or four different games a week mm. because of the genre that I'm in. So they well, they get creative, you know. They they have to get creative, you know. They'll they'll do stuff like I'm going to play with this TikTok, like the uh, Tim the Tatman. He'll do like TikTok builds. People will send him a build that somebody made on TikTok, and he'll play for X amount of rounds yeah. with that build. Or they'll do uh, you can't touch the grass, like you can't walk on grass. They basically have to make it into a different game because, it, like you said, the, I think it's anybody can't play a game for eight hours a day every day, five six days a week for a full year. You know, you're going to lose your mind. I mean, so. I guess a few people can but that's not the norm that's not (laughs) that's there's not much you can do for eight hours a day every single day without losing your mind you know what i mean so that's been our dude that's our inaugural episode of reboot engage what's going on on the uh uh, what's going on on the preacher or on channel man do you have anything special coming up anything you're enjoying right now anything you want people to check out okay yeah we should talk about that you're right uh my facebook got oh, blocked yeah. for two weeks so i'm bad not really boy streaming on facebook anymore bad yeah. boy and we don't we actually don't know what caused it i mean th- we finally found where it listed it took us a, a long time and a lot of hours of research to find even where they listed exactly what was wrong but well they didn't exact but where they just listed something went wrong and how long it would be um they still like their explanation was multiple different types of things and all those explanations were very broad like you could have done this it could have been yeah you were connected with another party or another website or another whatever and i was like okay that doesn't i don't think i did any of that but uh so i'm basically moving everything over to twitch twitch.tv slash preacher Oren. but i and even if i come back to facebook when it comes live I'm going to make Twitch my primary, and then Facebook will be like a secondary that, like, if people want to get discover me through there, that's fine, but that's not going to be my main focus. My main focus is going to be over on Twitch. 
Um, and hopefully we're going to be putting some uh, videos like Ply, some of the quality stuff you see from him on TikTok. I'm going to start doing some TikTok, some YouTube, some Instagram posts that are, you know, minute long type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we'll be getting that content up. But, you know, for right now, we're uh, we're doing the same old, same old, I guess, you know. The rebuilding phase. Yes, we're, we're nothing starting wrong with over that, from man. scratch. I started that a few months ago. I remember I used to play everything up until, what, uh-huh. February-ish. And then I finally, uh, shout out to AWOL for, uh, in his community for helping me kind of just find the direction. And as we just, we just noticed that our community really loved the horror stuff more than anything else. And they love to watch Ply flop around and scream and run and act like an idiot in these haunted houses. And so we've been going uh, full on horror here for the past few months. The growth of the channel has been amazing. I appreciate all you guys. We got a few things coming up, dude. We've 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 restarted. I've restarted the TikTok as well. Got some really good gaming clips coming up there. Um, been doing some of those sound challenges, having a good time meeting other TikTokers. They're they're funny as hell. And uh, we got a special thing debuting this week. Everybody loves the fireworks show that we do at the end of our horror streams. Um, and everybody loves when celebrities do the fireworks show that end our streams. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure you check it out. We are live on Facebook. We are live on Twitch uh, all the time. It is facebook.com forward slash Plyrock Gamer. And if you search for Plyrock Nation, you'll find me all over the place. But um, so they really liked Vince McPly. So, you know, the Vin- yeah, you're fired. So we're going to be doing a lot more Vince McPly stuff coming up on TikTok, coming up on Facebook book in the macho play yeah they like him too so and we've got grandma babushka coming up so grandma babushka herself the grandmother of the ply rock nation is going to be doing an entire horror stream here on may 28th at nine o'clock so a lot of good stuff coming up plus this podcast we're just getting it started uh we've got a wonderful graphic designer handling our new logo which is going to be debuting soon We're going to have our own social media here. If you guys want to leave a comment below, if you're listening on YouTube, we'd love to have you follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. This thing's only going to get better each and every week. We hope to have guests down Mm -hmm. the road. Uh, We hope to talk about the things that you want to talk about, the things that we want to talk about, not just video games. We'll do whatever the fuck we want over here. This is (laughs) this is a a Joe Rogan-esque inspired type podcast where we're going to have a good time, man, because the world's already full of enough shit. So this is where we can come to uh, to just veg out and have a good time with each other. And my co-host Preacher, thank you so much for accepting this assignment, hanging mm. out with me every week for an hour. It's been Kisses. a blast. We will see all you guys on the next Reboot Engage. Engage.